welcome to our podcast, where today we are celebrating the 30th anniversary of one of Tim Burton's greats. It is Edward Scissorhands time. Yes, there is no video today, strictly audio, but that's all right, because we're still going to get the same kind of content, but you just won't be able to see our pretty faces. I am Detective Artemis. And I'm Journey. And this is Drink to a Decade Podcast. Let us clank. Cheers. Uh, that was a clink right there. I don't know what that was, but we're, we're drinking booze for sure. Don't worry. Mm. So this is the first time oh. Art's having Centauri whiskey. It's a Japanese whiskey. It's very good. Or, so good. <laughs> or so should good. I say, ah, suburashi desu ne. Mm. That one semester of Japanese is working. I huh? remembered all the, <laughs> the, the fun phrases. <laughs> all the fun phrases. Mine's is uh, itatakimasu. Nani? Nani? <laughs> all right, dude. So let's do this. All right. Edward Scissorhands, man. 30 years. What do you like most about the movie? Uh, um, I guess it's kind of like the... For, for, for what the movie was, it really kind of highlights how shitty and terrible people are. <laughs> and, and, and I like that kind of stuff. I love when like films will really kind of point out the flaws in people and how terrible people can be. Uh, and, and in hopes of like people were, like looking at a reflection and being like, Hey, I should, I, I shouldn't be that way either. Cause I hate that person. Yeah. 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 And, and that's what I loved about it. It's like, it's a good reflection on how a communities can be. Right. And uh, one of the themes of the movie is uh, self-discovery. Yes. So people learn a lot about themselves in this movie, you know, and then we have Edward, who is a ultra sympathetic character, you know, this mm. this innocent humanoid. He's, he's not human. He doesn't age. He, he bleeds some sort of what is like synthetic blood or something because you there's a little like one of the flashback scenes. You see like um, a diagram of his anatomy. Yeah. And you kind of see that, like, he's not a human. He's no. he's like, you know, like almost like a robot, but yeah. not really a robot, like like a synthetic it no, it, it, he is a robot. It's he started off as that uh, that salad tosser. The salad tosser. <laughs> that salad tosser. That sounds like half of our friends. <laughs> yes, and uh, and and from that same diagram, you see it kind of progress into yeah, a more you, you humanoid right, yeah. way. And like you're right because uh, like the times he kept cutting his face when he first got picked up mm-hmm. by her, like there was no blood. But it was like there was, kept, there was like she was scars. wiping yeah she was wiping something off but it wasn't blood but he did cut himself a couple of times and you would see like blood or like fa- obviously fake blood or something something was there he was juicing out a little bit I don't think it was blood though it was it, it, it was synthetic it was, it was, or it was, some synthetic. Yeah. It was something well, it was but something. he he was a humanoid and he was this dude just you know kind of hanging out in his in his mansion after his uh, his inventor the creator of the event I think he was, he was called the inventor who was played but, by the late. Vincent Price, a horror icon for many decades. Yeah. Do, you, do you know how Vincent Price? Voice of uh, Thriller. Yeah, he was in Thriller at the, the very end. Uh, he was in House. <laughs> <laughs> he was in a House of Wax, which is the movie I know him from. And uh, he was actually a, a villain in the Adam West Batman. He was uh, he was Egghead or Eggman. I think it was Egghead. He was a really one of those really but, cheesy villains. But yeah, yeah, it was Vincent Price. Yeah, I only know him from Thriller. <laughs> like that's that's, that's the only thing I know him from. All right, it's gonna get a little sad o'clock right now though. But this was his last appearance in a movie, and mm. the last time we see him in a movie is his death scene, and that's a little sad and also kind of oh, sure. I guess hauntingly beautiful at the same time. I, but I yeah, man that. was a legend. Yeah, I love that. It's like kind of like in a way where his life was kind of portrayed in his own art. Yeah, so mm-hmm. and, uh, he seemed like a super cool guy. I wish I got to meet him, but he's a little few decades beyond my time. How old were you? So he died in 1990, I guess, or 89, probably 90, because the movie came in 90. So I so was, you were like, what, I was two. 20? Two and some change. Yeah, 20. 12? <laughs> I was actually 47. I, yeah. I, I Benjamin Button a lot. You Benjamin Button? Yeah. So the movie <laughs> itself. Um, so I love the, the 1950s suburbia area with like, you know, like uh, like the bright colors. Yeah. I love how you know Edward comes from a dark mansion. Mm-hmm. He's dark clothes. He had this dark looking character, and you put him in a world that's full of vivid colors. That's all you see is bright colors. Yeah. So I think that's a really cool contrast and um, a testament on how Tim Burton is a master vision, like a visual person. He yeah. this dude knows how to composite shots. He knows how to make them interesting, and he has that iconic you know style. So. And this is like peak bird in like late eighties or like mm. m- like early mid to nineties, like th- had his best. Yeah. So and of course it wouldn't be a Tim Burton movie without the music by Danny Elfman, which I still oh, hear that. the song where she's fucking doing the snow dancing. 
The yeah. little, the little, the, the little snow part. Like, yeah, the ending, the ending theme. Yeah, the that, ending that's theme like song. the main thing. I, the, the main theme I hear, and it's in my head right now. And I feel like just going outside and and dancing like a like an idiot. Although there would be no snow. Um, we can. There's no. We snow. can. We can make snow. We can make fake snow like we he can did. Make snow. Yeah. But anyways, yeah. <laughs> so I think it's um, Burden at his his finest, really. Yeah. I mean, he touched a lot of like that suburbia theme perfectly for the fact like one all the wives how like they were all together kind of like one upping each other like being being super gossipy and then that one moment that one moment when the husbands get home they all yeah, it's dude. like it's like the lights turn on and the kids have to go home uh-huh. yeah no as soon as they see their husbands cars pulling up all the women going back to their houses i never noticed that until like i rewatched it and i'm I was like, like what the fuck i was like, like holy shit it was like th- does this like yeah. wouldn't this get in trouble like nowadays I don't know. like portraying women like that but but it is it, it, it's, it was it, it was how it was like uh, what was it a uh, Stafford housewives kind of thing Stafford like, wives yeah they were it's like they're all kind of like the same at the end of the day they're like like uh, were they like androids uh, I think so yeah yeah oh. I think they were androids or replaced or some shit like that yeah, or brainwashed some shit some shit so yeah. when I saw that I was like what the fuck these, these wives are like oh my god let me go make the pot roast for my <laughs> husband beats me <laughs> it was fucking yeah. crazy dude yeah and then there's a time where like uh, they like all the husbands go out golfing and they all leave at the same time. Uh, they seem to come home and leave at the same time, which leads me to believe they might have some like secret gay orgies or something. <laughs> They're just tired of their wives. You know what? Like, there's a couple. There's, there's, like, yeah. there's a couple. There's a couple out there, man. Come on, let's go, Bill. You know what to do. <laughs> you know what to do. This is boring, but yeah. Uh, so you got the gossipy neighbors, and um, you have uh, one of the neighbors who is played by the late Conchata Farrell, who was I know her from a. Uh, Two and a half men. She was Bird of the Housekeeper. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. She passed away recently, and uh, it was it was cool to see her there. I, I forgot she was in that movie. She was uh, the bigger woman, right? The, yeah, the one. Well, who, she has the, the 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 first person you see in the movie where uh, his smart, mom. Yeah, the smart one was like, oh, because yeah. like you know you come here every time, and I never buy from <laughs> <Yeah>. you. <laughs> yeah, like, like, okay. like her trademark type of humor, so that was yeah. cool, and. Um, she was dope. I liked her. Yeah, and <laughs> I love how like all the like the housewives are all super gossipy and everything. But like the yeah, the, the 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 slutty one that was trying to sleep with all the people. Yeah, yeah. Her. You had a uh, the 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 crazy the, the, like Christian lady, Christian lady. Like uh, she was right at the end. She did bring death. <laughs> yeah, we'll, yeah. We'll, we'll come to that later. She was going yeah. to write, write about it. <laughs> she was. Yeah. No. And then. Uh, Avon and then the Avon thing yes. that was because because that Avon was perfect because it really represented all of the other stuff because it's not just Avon it's all scheming and multi level crap pyramid schemes like uh, there was Tupperware parties uh, Avon and stuff there was like a bunch of different the, the sharp knives one and like that was another thing that the housewives in that kind of suburban community always did they always threw these parties and just bought shit from each other yeah exactly do you remember Avon as a kid uh no. But oh. I do remember, um, uh, what were they, like, uh, crap, what was it? It was uh, the vacuum cleaners. The, no, the, the the carpet cleaner ones. Oh, okay. Where they sell I've these the portable ones. Yeah, there was, uh, like, those came around my neighborhood, but not Avon. Uh, I, the, like, I didn't live in that kind of community. We, we grew up, <laughs> well, we, we grew up in, like, the same area, but uh, my folks, we would have a ton of Avon catalogs and, like, a few of... Uh, few of like people in our family would sell Avon. So I knew Avon right away. Oh, yeah. And I'm like, wow, that takes me back. And uh, yeah, so but going back to Peg, uh, the, the mom, she was like the most purest of all of them. She was like the sweetest mom. She wasn't taking part of any yeah. like, gossiping or anything. Enduring. She was a good yeah, wife. she was like Great that mother. picture perfect mom that we all kind of want. Yeah, sweet. Wasn't even scared. No. No, no. Like she, she backed up a bit when she first saw him, but... I guess it's that that level of purity where it's like you're not scared. It's like when so, like like how certain kids aren't scared of shit. They just they're just curious. Yeah, and yeah. She was like she was probably the best. Yeah, no, she was the best character. Yeah, in that she movie. was like like probably more pure or as well probably more as pure as uh, or not as pure but like as Edward was because yeah they're both just these like nice people who want to you know believe in good. Also, so. also lonely. Yeah, well, Edward was only no, no, but so was she though, because that, that that a lot of different like like uh, housewives back then were just lonely because all they did was just work and and like take care of kids, and sometimes the kids are just old enough where they don't even want to spend time with them anymore. The husband's never at home, yeah. So, and and then as you can see in the beginning when she was doing the Avon thing, like even her own supposed friends were shutting the door in her face yeah, while she was true. just trying to like like even just like 
most of the time it's like when people do these like permit schemes, it, it, they're not just trying to do it like for money. Most of them try to get rich from it. But most of the time it's they get suckered into it because it's that community that you try to like build when it comes to like pyramid schemes. Like it's like it's like a sense of like community. Right. But she was getting shut out of everything. She, she literally had a door closed in her face. That's, that's so, a good point. So she felt lonely and which is why it, it was so easy and simple for her to connect with 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 Ed Edward. And I think that's why Edward connected with her, too, because she kind of reminds him of her of dad or creator or whatever she just has that like that welcoming presence that like, welcoming hey, come presence. Over. like she's definitely that like that person who would like uh like help a wounded bird you know yeah like i can fix you type of thing and she even tried to like help him like with his scars and stuff and she was having all that problem like up with the avon makeup and shit yeah so uh yeah and i like how she was like just so persistent in trying to get this Avon soul to this fucking like creepy mansion. <laughs> and she's like, I'll fight zombies. I'm going to sell this shit. She goes in there and everything. Uh, I would have been like, hell no. Fuck no. No, like the, the place was falling apart. And yeah. yet she still went all the way up. Th- what, what I never understood is like what got her to go all the way up there. Uh, well, I think she heard she the little getting- scissor sounds, but, but, but who's going to follow the sounds of scissors? Like, I, she was determined to sell this shit. She was like, I know someone's here. You I'll know? sell it to a mummy. I'll sell it to a bat. Can you, <laughs> can you imagine like trick-or-treaters like coming in your house like, I know you're in here. Give me some candy, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> like like lights are off and everything. No sign uh, of light, but they're still knocking. They let themselves. And it was kind of like that. She was those like really like persistent, determined ads that you can't skip. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> you know, uh, what I was wondering, it's maybe I'm skipping ahead, but uh, when his dad died, did anybody come pick up the body? What happened to the uh, body? I'm glad you brought that up. I don't know, dude. Like, I don't know what... Because Edward wouldn't know... And, he, and, he, did, he did not know what death And is. the creator passed away a long time ago because he didn't have scars in his face yet. Yeah. And... and so we and, don't know how much time passed in between, but it's, it was a uh, while for exactly. sure. Exactly. I mean, the, like, the scars, his, the, the decay of his, like, like hairstyle and clothes and the, the, the house... A house to decay like that and fall apart takes takes a fucking while. Yeah, yeah. So, so did did Edward just kind of leave the body sitting? There I I, I would say so. I would say his body is still there because there's a part where um in the beginning where like uh Peg asks Edward like where is your dad? He's like he didn't wake up, which is probably one of the saddest yeah. lines. But he that's where he shows that he doesn't know what death is. No. In fact, he probably thinks that he's just taking the biggest nap of his life, and. He doesn't realize that his the the inventor is uh-huh. like decaying all this. It's it's possible he just uh-huh. left him right there. We don't see yes, that though. room. I don't, uh-huh. think, I don't think we see that room again when when Peg gets there. No, Cause, I mean, because you, can you imagine she walks in that room and she sees a fucking like dead like, skeleton? Yeah, just, just, just right there. Just, she's like, oh my god, I'm gonna fuck out. But do you want some Avon, Mister Skeleton, for the, yeah. those scars? Because like you have nice cheekbones, we can highlight yeah, those right. perfectly. <laughs> yeah, so I don't know. It, it's never said, um, but then it kind but, of... But definitely nobody came to pick it up because no. if the cops came and picked up the dead body... Uh, they they would have found Edward. They would have found Edward. Also, you know how it is when somebody passes away. Right away, freaking the bank. Everybody wants to take over the property. The city wants to take over and be like, oh, nobody's living in this. And they'll try to like... But then technically Edward's a squatter, so uh, the, the house would go to him. Because yeah. he lived there the longest. That'd and, be weird. That, that That's he, just weird. He'd be like the next of kin. So that would be his place if the yeah. inventor invented a will for him. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Because uh, the inventor seemed pretty rich too. Yeah. Well, yeah. That's a yeah. fucking sweet ass gothic mansion. Yeah. So that shit's paid for. So yeah, I don't know. It, it's Like I said, it's possible he might have just, just left in there because he, does, he doesn't know what death is. He doesn't yeah. know what anything is. It's fucking dark. Really dark. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> Um, yeah, so wasn't uh, it, wasn't it pretty cliche how the movie started where it's like, uh, wasn't that the thing back then where oh, like old the people, fairy tale? yeah, the fairy tale I remind of the princess bride like that. Yeah. Um, but other ones are like that. That come to mind right away. Ah, it's a, it's so much of a cliche. Which is, which is, which is, well, no, which is, is weird. Cause that one's a little bit kind of like in the present. But it starts off with like that fairy tale beginning where the grandma starts talking about witches. You're talking about the witches? The witches, yes. Okay. The I, witches. I haven't seen the remake, but I remember. I haven't seen the remake. Okay. But, uh, uh, but, but, Is that how the original one started? Yeah. It started with uh, the grandma talking about the witches and okay. the, the story of when she was a kid, uh, when she was younger. And then it kind of like goes into the present. Oh, okay. And it kind of leads on through there. It's it, it, but yeah, there was that one on, and then there were some other ones. I there can't. was a few. Funny thing about the witches, I watched it as a kid, like early 90s. I would see it on TV, and I'm like, this. You, you this were the movie. one that told me to watch it. 
So I was like, this is a really like fun, weird out there kind of movie. But for years, like I never knew what the movie was called because every time I'd watch it on TV, it'd, it'd be already started. Yeah. So I'd pretty much like find it every time where I like <laughs> I left off. So for years, I'm like, what the fuck is the name of that movie with the witches in it? Turns out it's just called the fucking witches. The witches. Yeah. When I found out, I was like, God damn it, man. <laughs> it was that. It's like it was at the tip of the tongue. Literally, it was tipping the tongue. Yeah. And so. Uh, that's in, funny. Uh, what was what was her name? Uh, uh, Angelica, Angelica Houston. Houston uh, for Morticia. Some, yeah, for some reason in that movie, she was so fucking hot. I don't know why. I thought she was super hot. I got to rewatch it now so I can like look at him like. So this is Ernie's type, huh? No, well, that, I do like like brunettes. And wasn't uh, she like Ravenhead? Raven. There you go. Yeah. Ra- Raven. Raven. But um, well, it, are, is there any actual natural Raven hairs out there? It's like. Most of the time, most of the time, it's they're dyed. It's it's actual raven hairs are really rare. Like you, oh, oh, there's, maybe. There's, I'm not I'm, sure. You're like, there's no video in this. <laughs> uh, anyway. uh, <laughs> <laughs> anyways, um, yeah, yeah, context. <laughs> where's my where's uh, my whiskey? There's no video, so no one knows <laughs> that I'm not wearing any pants. So sucks for a journey. No, nobody knows that I'm not wearing any underwear. Whoa, what is this going to lead to? Find out after these messages. This episode was brought to you by Suntory Whiskey. And Nefta Vodka. Nefta Vodka. Uh, this is terrible. This I hope we cut this out. <laughs> no, this is staying in. This is staying in. We got, we got to entertain people somehow since they're not getting our beautiful faces. Roger that, man. Although, although I will say this is, this is cool. Because, I mean, uh, I do miss doing audio-only podcasts because, one, it's little editing, and it's just so Very much easier to just get out. Um, we don't have to worry about, like, looking good because, like, uh, the bitch thing about doing any sort of, like, video thing is setting up. Setting up. It's yeah, so, that's like, true. I want to be in this place in life where I have a room, like a specific studio where yeah. everything's already plugged in. I just got to flip the switch, and I'm ready to go. Yeah, and That's, like, the status I want to be in. And we don't need a producer, which is yeah. the reason why we're doing it like this today, because uh, Colleen wasn't able to get here or anybody right. else. It is just us two. Just today. us two. I mean, it's it's the holidays. It's so two dudes. It's, it's two dudes. It's two dudes it's drinking in a, in a very empty building right now. Yeah, nobody's not, here at the not, studio. Yeah, please don't murder Yeah, but us. we get all the whiskey to ourselves. That's true. Glass yeah. half full, literally, mm. pun intended. Oh, that is true. With the Wham. nice, With the nice in it. <laughs> <laughs> so going back to Vincent Price really quick, I just want to wrap mm. something up. Um, Love it. For as a kid, I didn't know how in the fuck he died because when you see it in the movie, you know, like it's obvious that he has a heart attack. It's obvious now, but as a kid, I'm like, did he kill him because he like broke his heart or something, or like because he he breaks like the fake hands that he gives Edward? No, and he dies at the same time. No, and I, and I thought for some reason, like I no, I think it was different. I think it was uh, the old man. Uh, had a heart attack. Yeah, and and he lost control of his body and ended up like it. It, it was it was all a, like it looked to me like it was all one motion where the old man starts falling and Edward wanting to catch him, but the hands get in the way and they go into these the prosthetics. It, it, and, it, and, it, and it was kind of like a motion where like it's it, I think it was just the old man falling you, and then the the hands being impelled in the scissors. You thought that he was trying to catch him because I didn't. I didn't get that vibe. I looked like he was just so into it that he kind of messed it up, and it was like sort no, because because like well, he was into it, but he was like touching his face with the hands, and his scissors were like right in between, nowhere near sharp edges of the actual hand. It's when the old man's face actually his eyes widen. Yeah, when when you start seeing the hands fall, like like start getting stabbed. Mm-hmm. But that's like the old man was already falling. But that was yeah, that already happened. So I like I said, I I thought I I didn't know how he died. Like watching as a kid, like it heart never attack. made sense. Yeah, it was just an old I, guy. I didn't know. But now it's oh yeah, you know it's a heart attack, and it's also a pretty sad metaphor for like how Edward was close to being finished. Yeah, and like and when uh, when Peg meets him, she's like, "Is that your hand?" He's like, "I'm not finished." And oh yeah, yeah. So that's like. That's that never that never dude. clicked to me. Yeah, that never clicked to me. Yeah. For some reason, I'm not finished. I thought he was talking about something else. Oh, he was probably beaten off because you know when she yeah. sees him, he's like in the corner. <laughs> I thought he was like snipping something or working on something, and like because <laughs> like because he's that's what he does. Like he even he still maintained the lawn and all the 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 hedges and all of that. So I thought he was working on something. Yeah, his whole thing was not being complete or finished, and yeah. when he found. The family, he felt that purpose of being complete or finished because they accept him for who he was. Yeah. 
Well, he started feeling like he was complete, and uh, during the talk show that, that they made, it was so perfect. <laughs> it was so perfect because they were like, "Yeah, if you get your hands fixed, then you're gonna be like everybody else." And then, and then it's like, "Yeah, that's that's what I want to be." And then it's she, not true. It's like you, you like you'll still be special. And yeah, she says the most mom thing that like a mom could ever say. He'll yeah. always be special. And I was like, "Man, I, was like, Fuck, I wish I wish Come my on, mom. mom, yeah, I wish my mom loved me like that." Hell no. Oh man, all I got was like. Random objects thrown at my head. It was mostly a chunkla, wasn't it? Mm, no, she got creative. Oh, <laughs> yeah, she got creative. Chunkla was like probably the the easiest one to go for, but but no, she got creative at times. She had she had the time. All right, well, let's not turn this into a therapy session. <laughs> but isn't we'll be, we'll be here for a while? But isn't this what exactly what are you like most it is. podcasts this are? Is, this is kind of like the most, a, the most successful podcasts are the ones that self help. It's like a yeah, like a therapy like a therapy session. There's a self help. There's another word it's for it. It's self help. It's another, it's ah. it's self help. We self-help by teaching you guys to drink your palms away. <laughs> stuff it down with brown. <laughs> stuff it down with... Stuff it down with brown? With brown, like whiskey. Oh, okay. Mm. This is more like a, a lightish... Like amber, isn't it? Amberish color. Uh, it kind of looks like pee, to be honest. The Centauri it's whiskey? It's the best pee I've ever had. And, I've had and I haven't had a lot of pee before. Pee, 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 pee. <laughs> <laughs> Um, mm. All right, so did you? Did, okay, I found it funny because I like I, it was like I made a little joke to myself when I was watching uh, Edward Scissorhands mm. when he was going around like cutting everybody's bushes <laughs> and like <laughs> I was like I was like, dude, Edward is literally servicing all the women in the block. Yeah, yeah, and I was like, I was like, if he had a dick, like he'd be pretty much fucking all these women behind their husbands' back. He's servicing all of them, right? And it's like. All all the women were so excited because he was something new, like yeah, fresh. He was a new toy, different new toy being passed around from like house to house, and they and they all like, like just. Uh, it also reminded me of um, you remember that season, the the carnival season of American Horror Story. Uh, I don't think I watched that one. The carnival one, freak show. I haven't seen freak it. show. Yeah, well, freak show. Uh, the guy, crap, I forgot his name. The, the lobster kid. Though, lobster right? kid, yeah. He was going around uh, women's houses and, and fingering them with his lobster hands. And like they were passing him around and like he was like this like toy. And I was like, yeah, yeah. yeah. But scissor hands, lobster hands. Hey, there you go. That well, makes I sense. think this is maybe a little sharper. Yeah. So I don't think you want to. He was still a trimming bush. Yeah, see, that, that's where I thought you were going to go with this whole thing. I did go there. I thought you were going to be like, oh, I went he, there. I, I went there. I, I know you did, but like, I thought at first you'd be like, oh, you know, he's cutting people's hair and stuff. And I thought you'd be like, what if some woman just drops her pants? She's like, cut my bush. Well, that's basically what the one chick did. Dude, she like pretty much came all over herself when she was like, when he was cutting her hair. She yeah. Was like, oh, oh. But that was, it was so fucked up though when he rejects her and, <laughs> and she like you, flips it on him. Yeah. And it's like, dude. You you raped this technically not mentally retarded mentally. Uh, uh, Remember, he's not really undev human. undeveloped. It was an underdeveloped human, and he she basically raped him, attempted to. or attempted to rape him. Yeah, and, and it's a you know she flips it on him. I'm like that's pretty fucked up. That's fucked up. But here's the thing though, if if that were to like continue into like the like the court or whatever, they'd mm. be like this person isn't human enough or human at all to be having something considered that would be human rights to, to you will get that lawyer who's like this this dude's not human he does not act like human he does not he doesn't have the insides of a human so therefore he mm. cannot have human rights so therefore it's okay to rape edward i guess that's true if that was lawyers say it's, that's true but it's, then it's fucked up but there's some lawyers who are a little bit more philosophical who could, who could like fight and be like oh yeah isn't it said that most people would like um like if they consider themselves a human or alive, it's because they're scared of their own life of the like ending. And then they can go without argument and be like, he's actually alive. He's an actual person. He might he's not be He's definitely sentient. Yeah. He's sentient. And it's like still, so why wouldn't, cause then, um, is it okay to like rape an animal? It's like, and then they can use bestiality as a thing. Cause bestiality is illegal. Okay. okay. And it'd be like now, now then it'll be like some kind of robot version of bestiality. All right, let's not bring in, there. let's, let's not like, bring Alabama into this. All right. We're, we're good. Dude. <laughs> But yeah, so it's like, crazy. You can't say that. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that was, that was fucked up. Uh, yeah, that, that's pretty much like the start of his like decline. That's where like shit started to go downhill for him because he was at his peak. You know, he, everyone was loving him, and I loved there was a lot of like like low angle shots on Edward to like really show how on top he was, how bigger he was. You know. Yeah. And then afterwards, it, they, those angles just went away, and he just kind of became you know 
like regular and then it got lower down. But those low angle shots are pretty effective. And mm. again, a testament to uh, Tim Burton's like shot composition. The man, he's he's absolutely one of my favorites. No, yeah. so yeah, that that's crazy when you do when you do these things. And and nobody really realizes it, but it still gets your message across, and you get the the actual feeling that it was supposed to portray. Yeah, because he does feel at top of the world mm-hmm. in the beginning. And like, even if like you don't really like know why they do it, you can still at face value see it as like this is visually interesting. This looks cool. Yeah. So it's that's awesome. Like you don't you don't really think about layers and shit like that, and then like you read some stuff or whatever, and then you're like you see things completely different now. Yeah. You start noticing the little details of everything. That's, that's, that's art. That's why, uh, film- it is I shut up. <laughs> that's why, uh, uh, filmography is, is, is a form of art. Definitely. Yeah. Um, so it's funny to see, uh, was it, I keep wanting to say Michael C. Hall, but that's Dexter, uh, Anthony, Anthony, Michael Hall, the, the blonde huh? kid from breakfast club, the nerdy kid. He was the, he was yes. Jim. He was the bad guy. He was the asshole in this movie. No way. I didn't yes. recognize him. That's him. The kid from Weird Science? Because he was bigger and he was, mus- he more was, muscular? He was an asshole. Because like, I'm used to I'm used to him being so skinny because of Breakfast Club. I don't well, I didn't recognize him. That was him. like five years, six years before this movie. So he was really? definitely younger. But yeah. it's the same dude. No way. And before that, he was playing like the nerdy kids and it was I didn't it, recognize him. Was it in Sixteen Candles or um that was our fucking Molly Rewan movie? Oh S- shit. Um you not Sixteen Candles, uh, I just, Pretty in Pink? One of those movies, I, I, I think it might have been Sixteen Candles. The when one was, where the one where the girl gets raped in the car. Uh, we gotta we gotta stop talking about rape here. It's, but probably, but, but it is. It's, it's <laughs> it one is. of those movies. I think he was in it. But anyway, and, and he was he, he was the, the other the other guy. It was either him or the dude from Two and a Half Men, uh, Alan. He was in one of those movies too. Shit, he, he was, was in one he of was those. Ducky. And I forget which movie it was. Yeah, every Molly Ringwald movie is the same. But pretty much, technically, yeah, technically, yeah, pretty, pretty much. But yeah, so to see, uh, to see Anthony Hall in this, like, uh, the time, like, he was the nerdy kid before, mm-hmm. and then he played an asshole in this movie. He did it really well. I think I was a dick. Yeah, that's 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 nice, right? He was awesome in the Dark Knight for a quick second, too. That's what he was. Um, do you remember where, like, um, it was like in the middle of the movie where Joker's already doing his crimes, he's challenging Batman to like show himself and. One of the um, videos, this dude's like upside down, and he's reading like, "Oh, you know, Batman must show Batman must show his face," or blah blah blah, and like it's a blonde dude. That's him oh, too. Oh yeah. yeah, okay. So that's a like you know blink and you miss type of cameo. Yeah, well, oh, no. yeah. But going you back have, to but going you only back had to, one good role. <laughs> but go, I loved him in Weird Science too. Yeah. Uh, going back to Jim, like, do you think he deserved to die? Because the movie when he dies, it's like it, it has like a sort of different tone to it now. Yeah. Um. I think he could have just went to jail. I wouldn't say he, he got stabbed and died. <laughs> he fell. That is true. I don't. I don't think he deserved to die. Although, like, he was a huge asshole, overprivileged. Uh, but like, I don't know. Like, like it's it's usually it's like people like that that like you see they usually end up getting worse. And worse. And he like, was definitely like a, a manipulator. He was a manipulator. He, he he just would have gotten worse. He hit her. Like that was that was fucked up. I mean, but I think he needed to die to properly set that tone at the end. Um and help kind of like in the story, kind of like end it all. Like they killed each other. It's like they just kind of like made sense. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't think he deserved to die. Yeah. Uh, mm. it's like, uh, you know, again, if anything, his dick get chopped off. Like, I mean, that, <laughs> like I would have been cool with that. I mean, they yeah. mentioned a couple of times, uh, the little, the brother who was actually the brother in honey. I shrunk the kids. The one with the glasses. Mm-hmm. He was the brother in this movie too. No way. Yeah. So yeah, they, yeah, he yeah, mentioned, yeah, a, right. he mentioned a couple of times like, Oh, one karate chopped to the throat and you'll die. He said like two or three times in the movie. I'm like, Oh my God. Like. What if they did that? Like they kind of foreshadowed it, you know? So he fucking like chops Jim in the throat. He would <laughs> bleed out. That would have yeah. been better than getting just stabbed in the chest and falling through a window. But but also back in the days around that era, uh, it was popular for characters to die from falling. All the Disney movies, they fought to their death. Funny enough, in uh, Tim Burton, uh, Batman, you know, 89 Joker, he falls and dies. Falls to his death. I, uh, not to sound like sadistic, but I laugh. When people like <laughs> fall to their death, especially like in video games, like you go to like the, like the cliff levels and you fucking like, yeah. you know, make people fall. I, that makes me crack up. And I, I love that. <laughs> it's funny. No, I love that too. 
uh, I'm the type of person that that when they first play a video game, they're like, oh, wonder if this game has fall damage. And then I jump, and then I'm like, ah, oh, it does have fall damage. Yeah, right, like <laughs> a fallout. Ch- then I, ch- and then I uh, chuckle to myself. Yeah, yeah, chuckle to myself. So, uh, but that was the thing. You know what I noticed about, like, uh, I noticed it's how I've never seen this movie on a streaming platform. Okay. Like, I've never seen it on anything. I haven't seen it be brought up on Hulu or Netflix. And I realized, like, uh, I wonder why. Because, like, there's certain movies where they, they are iconic and they are memorable. But you'll never see them on a streaming platform. Well, it was on Disney Plus last year. Was it? It was. I don't remember seeing I remember that. it on there. It was there. And then now it's not. Is this Disney? It's not Disney, is it? No. It was your hands. Is it I don't know. Disney. Producer. Yes, my lord. Can you check to see if it's from Disney? Yes, please. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think it, yeah, but but like I've never seen it on a streaming platform, and and there's some other movies I can also think about that like I rarely ever see pop up up there. It's usually because of a, a rights issue. It's, it's always a rights issue. It's like you know, someone's like, no, it's my movie. No, it's my movie. No, you can't put it there because it's my movie. All right, you can put it on there for like another twenty days because it's my movie. Yeah, no, I want to see it up there. I don't know why I chose to do that accent. I don't know either. No, it, it's it's Fox. It's a Fox. So movie. technically, yeah. it Fox. is Disney now. A, oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, so Fox is a distributor. Uh, oh, before we start doing this podcast, you brought it up that this movie is kind of technically a holiday movie. A what movie? You said that this is a holiday movie, technically. I would think it is a holiday movie because it has, like, especially towards, Five like, a, the middle or the end. <laughs> Five minutes. You got, like, the <laughs> fake snow. You got that Christmas party. And you kind of feel all warm inside like you do with a nice cup of like hot no, chocolate that, in the winter. That's when shit starts going bad. That's when it started going bad. There's a Christmas tree in there. Therefore, it is a Christmas movie. For 10 minutes. It's a Christmas movie. It's like a point like. Okay, okay, okay. It, it's probably not a Christmas movie, but it's definitely a holiday movie. Can we agree with that? It's probably more of a Christmas movie I, than Die Hard. I, but it's no Die Hard. It's definitely it's that's, I know, I know. that's a full the relax, whole thing man. happens during Christmas. <laughs> like this is this is like what two five percent of the movie is like. Yeah, five percent. But, but there is a Christmas tree. There's a Christmas. It's tree. a Christmas movie. It's not a Christmas movie. It's Anyways, not a movie. It's, there's nothing holiday ish about it. Uh, yeah, there's they're, they're decorating the Christmas tree and then. Yeah, I, I, I got nothing. No, no, it's a holiday no. movie. I'll keep it at that. You can watch it maybe early December. Get I, ready for Christmas, I, but it won't be a Christmas movie. But well, this came out in December. It did before Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I guess I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to disagree, though. But, 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 but we can agree to disagree. Fine. And yeah. this is also the first time we see uh, Tim Burton and Johnny Depp collaborate in the first of their many, many, many often questionable <laughs> collaborations together. Yeah. Like they, I noticed how the, a lot of different directors end up clinging to that, their star and then just kind of writing it from there. It's also not just their star, but they'll have like, um, the same like composer, editor, cinematographer and stuff. Cause exactly. like you want to have people, you want to have a team basically to help you get your vision out. And it's yeah. usually people that you know and have worked with before. Yeah, it's a proper collaboration. Yeah. No, it's, it's, it's good to work with people like who are just sort of on the same page. That's why you'll see Christopher Nolan. Like bands. Same people. Like, yeah. who? like, like in bands. Bands. Like you, yeah. Like people don't know how to make music together. It's like, you know how to read each other. Right. And jam out. You got to make a, a visual music. Yeah. Visual music. That's true. With, with the score. Yeah. And, uh, and, and, uh, this was the first time that, uh, Winona Ryder and, and Johnny Depp worked together, right? Yeah, and I think they also this is where they they started dating, and he got that tattoo that said Winona, Winona Forever. He was like uh, he was all like jumping on couches and shit, like Tom Cruise was. <laughs> Tom Cruise was, and then they broke up, and he was like, you know what? I should probably remove this tattoo, and and now it says Wino Forever. That is a awesome save. Is it? <laughs> it is. <laughs> Why no forever? Yeah, I wouldn't. I, I wouldn't want that on me. But he has the most weirdest, dumbest tattoos on him, though. Well, he also has like a thousand like uh, bracelets too. I don't know if he still does that, but he had a lot of bracelets. Every once in a while, he still does it. Like I guess so. 
Yeah, but like, so they were a huge celebrity couple when they first got together, and like for some reason, I feel like they did more movies together afterwards. But I, but but I, I yeah, I don't think I, so. I didn't see anything else after that. Mm-hmm. Uh, they said that like they met at the premiere of uh, this movie called Great Balls of Fire, which is by the dude who's like the, the, it's a biopic yeah, about the dude, the biopic, oh. with, and his his child bride who was his cousin, which is fucking weird. Yeah, and that was Winona Ryder. <laughs> yeah, and she was in that movie, and Johnny Depp saw her, and it was like a sort of like. Across the room, first love at sight, like in that, like Romeo and Juliet type yeah. of thing. That's how they met, according to them. She was cute as fuck when, like, when she was younger. Like, well, now she's she plays she plays the the crazy role so way too perfectly. Yeah, she's in Stranger Things. Yeah, she's, where's my boy? She's way where's too, my will? Yeah, she's way too crazy. It, 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 it all went downhill when she got caught stealing, <laughs> doing all the it just. Don't shoplifting. forget, she was also in Alien Resurrection, which is by far the worst Alien movie. Like, no, no, no. I don't know about that. Alien vs. Prey was pretty bad. I haven't seen Covenant or Prometheus. They're, those are fucking amazing, bro. They're fucking amazing. You think amazing. they're good? They're fucking amazing. They're, they're, they're the perfect prequel to the whole entire thing. So you like Prometheus? Yeah, Prometheus was great. Okay. And so and so was a... Uh, and Covenant was... Just, it was a notch down because it, it, it tries to bridge everything. But uh, that like I've always loved uh, Ripley. No, but, but, crap. What was his name? Uh, well, her name is Ripley. No, the yeah, the the, the director. Fuck, I, yeah. I, my my brain's not working right now. Oh my god, is he's one of my favorite directors too? And I, I'm, right. I'm, it starts with an R. Oh, I don't want to look it up. I don't want to be a bitch. Look it up. I don't want to be a bitch. Look it up. But he, yeah, he, he, wrote he, he just all did. The a, he just did a show yes. coming out too. And yeah, he did. You know, so I'm a bitch. It starts with an R. It starts with an R. Crap. Uh, Ridley. Ridley Scott. Ridley Scott. Ridley Scott. 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 Ridley Scott. It's th- I did it. Starts with an I did R. It. Ridley, Scott. Ridley Scott. Yeah, no, I love all Ridley Scott uh, Scott stuff. Uh, I haven't seen Resurrection in, in in a while, but it is the weakest one out of all of them. And also, Alien vs Predator. I wouldn't say that counts because that was like a weird crossover. And, well, Ridley and, Scott didn't and, didn't direct uh, Alien Resurrection. Exactly. But he didn't do or, no, no, or but it's three. still still part of his franchise, though. So I mean, <laughs> he probably was like his fuck universe. This shit. He didn't he didn't at least help produce it or write it. I think it was just his characters. Uh, but you know who was the writer for Alien Resurrection? I forgot to mention Joss Whedon. Huh. The Avengers guy. Yeah, he he wrote that movie. Uh, but uh, so but, I like Josh Whedon. Uh, but he has he has his. He has his wins and losses. Some of his stuff is good. Some of his stuff is is great. And some of his stuff just uh, kind of misses the target. I agree. And um, around the same time is where he wrote the movie for Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Because yeah. it was a movie before it was a and show. It was a launch to something bigger. That was great. So, yeah. But obviously with Alien Resurrection, it was like a whole bunch of student interference and all that type of shit. And actually, David Fincher, who is one of my favorite directors, directed Alien 3, mm-hmm. which that movie sucked as well. And, you know, they're all like, you know, they, they disown it and all this stuff. Because, again, you know, Fox and their studio interference. Uh, three is when, well, she's not a clone yet in three, right? Resurrection is when she's a clone. Yes, Resurrection is when she's a clone. Yeah. The three or Resurrection. No, Resurrection is Rex- when she's a clone. The clone. So and three. part three is where she becomes like the alien queen and she or she fights it at the end. No, no, she no. She fights no. the, no, no, she gets. She fights it. She, oh, she gets, oh, so she gets, they, they, they bring her back to life. Well, no, they take they, her they out of stasis. stasis. They rescue her and take her out of stasis. And, and I think there was like another outbreak or something. Uh, yeah. yeah. And fucking, um, Tywin Lannister was in that movie. Yeah. He was kind of like the scientist guy. Yeah. He was a scientist. There you go. I was trying to remember. Yeah, he was a scientist. Um, oh, have we strayed from our original topic? We strayed topic. far, but you know what? This is what we do. I, I could talk about Alien all day. We can talk about Alien. Yeah. Uh, but, weren't we going to talk about like our favorite, either Johnny Depp or like Tim Burton movies? Yeah, let, let's go down that route. All right, what is your favorite Tim Burton movie? I'll go first. Just kidding. Go ahead. <laughs> just, no, go ahead. No, please go first. Go ahead. No, you do it. Go, you go. You do it. All right, Batman. No, go ahead. <laughs> um, I, I, I have to say that it's, it's probably going to have to be Nightmare Before Christmas. Um, I don't think he directed that. He didn't direct that movie. But that's Tim Burton. Yeah, he did. I think he, it's based off like his uh, his like artwork, and I think he might have just wrote a story. Does it have to be that something that he directed? Because like that was straight I, up based by so. him, and he created it. He didn't even write the screenplay. So it's it's, it's based off of a, it's. I think it's based off of a short story that he did. Yeah, it's, it's... But everybody says it's a Tim Burton, so is it? 
Well, they're his characters basically because he did a short story and they made a movie about it. So technically, it's an adaptation, and he's a producer in the movie. So yeah, we, we can we can call it. That's fine. That's his movie. It, That's, it, it's it's oh wow, it's so complicated when that happens. Yeah. It's like you're a producer, but you're a director, but it's based off of your work. And I mean, it, I, it, are you? It are says you? a Tim Burton film, even though like you didn't do everything. I hate when movies do that. I hate when like a director says because it has such a, a Tim Burton vibe too. Like, well, Dan, yeah, yeah. And Danny Elfman again. Yeah, so. and Danny Elfman. And it's funny because the actual director, no one fucking, he's not remembered for directing that movie. That's like, oh, it's Tim Burton. Uh huh. I think it was Henry Selleck who directed it. But um, yeah. So okay, that's All fine. Right. Well, okay. Um, then if anything, I'm going through his like filmography right now. I can uh, tell you. Then it hands down, I think I have to say from what I've seen so far, uh, Mars Attacks. Mars Attacks. Fucking Mars Attacks. That was a fun one. Fucking Mars Attacks. I'm gonna say another one I love is uh, Ed Wood. Another Johnny Depp movie with him. Uh, Beetlejuice. Obviously, Beetlejuice is up that's there. A, that's in my top five. That one's always been in my top five. We should do a top ten Burton. A top ten. Yeah. Because that's yeah. never been done before, right, guys? A top 10 Tim Burton. <laughs> I don't want to do, do 10. Well, anyways, yeah, so. No, I, 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 yeah, I would say top five. Top also, five Tim Burton would be good. I love Sleepy Hollow as well. Sleepy Hollow was dope. It's just that Christina Ricci and Winona Ryder, they're, they are, no offense if they will ever watch this, but they were not good in that mo- those, like, those movies at all. They were kind of like the weakest point. Uh, I don't know if you've seen Sleepy Hollow it, recently. It, it's she's. I, I, ha, I do. I have another like, Johnny Depp movie, by the way. I have. I have a huge heart on for Christina Ricci. I like know. I can see it. I so mentioned her they, name, and I'm like, dude, put that tent away. I'm not wearing any underwear. Of course, you're gonna see it. Fine, fine. <laughs> it probably didn't help that I was staring right at it. That's your fault <laughs> for looking. Anyways, dude. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. No. Like. Uh, but you're all right. But it was a different like like era, and acting back then was different. And they had a different type of, like, star power. They had a, a ton of great actors in that movie. Fucking Dark City is, Count Dooku. They were mm. all in that movie. Wait, we're talking about C.B. Hollow? Yes. Uh, and Uncle Vernon was in there, too. From Harry Potter. Oh, yeah, Uncle yeah. Vernon. He, yeah. Was, he was the, the, the obviously, the, the chubby guy. The, the chubby the guy. <laughs> the, the chubby guy. He wasn't a dad. He was a... He was... No, was, no he wasn't the constable. He was, no, he was uh, one of the, he was the guys the, he was that the got He was the main dude. He was, like, plotting. He wasn't... No. No, that was Christina yeah. Ricci's dad, wasn't it? Yeah, it was Christina Ricci's. Yeah. And, and, and he wasn't plotting. You need to rewatch this movie. I, you know, it's, I watched like two <laughs> months ago. Uh, I watched it last month. I too. remember it. Well, it was the lady, the, the twin lady. It, yeah. was, it was all because of her. Yeah. Well, anyway, it was this whole political corruption that is no way reflecting today. Mm hmm. No. Do we need a headless horseman? Headless horseman? <laughs> huh? I said, do we need a headless horseman in our life right now? That'd be fucking rad. Hmm. No. It was, a, no. It, was a, it was a rhetorical question. No. I do want to go to CP no. Hollow one day. It's an actual place? I'm pretty sure. If not, I'm going to be chasing rainbows. <laughs> I want. I actually want to visit Salem. Salem? Yeah. I actually want to really visit Salem. I heard it gets pretty lit during uh, Halloween. Uh, oh, when I watch a QB Halloween. Okay. That, that takes place in uh, Salem, right? I haven't seen it. Yeah, I think that takes place in Salem, I think. Oh, okay. I've always wanted to go to, um, yeah. like... In Oregon, like uh, Astoria, where the Goonies took place. Oh yeah, and then also I think around there too is where they have those those uh, catacombs, those like haunted like catacombs. Mm. I want to get to the French catacombs. Oh yeah, and uh, yeah. what's uh, the movie? Uh, as above, so below. Yeah, as above, so below. Where there's like billions of corpses that that. I don't like, know about billions, but it's a lot. It's oh yeah, millions. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it, yeah, Dr. it's Evil it, over it here. Is, it's it's definitely in the billion. No, it, it's definitely millions. Uh, possibly billions. There's uh, a lot of dead people. We'll down just there. say a lot. Like a lot. Can, okay, we'll say a, a lot. lot. This is a, a lot. lot. Okay, not a billion though. <laughs> definitely not a billion. A billion. But, but a couple Maybe a million. thousand. A couple thousand. Million. No, it's a couple million. Thousands. All right, producer, check. It's it's about a million, like more than a, four million. I'm gonna guess four, four million? million. I'm gonna guess four million corpses. Go check. All right, you know. What? I'm gonna guess four million corpses. All right, keep, keep talking about Edward Scissorhands, please. <laughs> what am I gonna say about Edward Scissorhands? Um, so I really did love how solid they were with build, building the hands and the costumes and the arrangement. Stan it, Winston, give credit to Stan Winston. Stan who, Winston, who made Alien the, the alien creature effects. The alien creature effects. That, and the, Terminator. The, and Terminator. Oh shit! Good job on Terminator. But they did, uh, yeah. So those were really legit. The, the I never understood how the scissor hands worked. Now, did they cut whenever he went back and forth on his like fingers, 
Or did he have to grab like the index and middle finger and kind of like, like trill him? Like, like if you're like walking, like how did the, the scissors work? Or was it like a spider web or like, you know what I mean? Like the, the spidey shooter from Spider-Man. It's like the, it, web, it, shooters? It, the web shooters. Like when you, the, the whiskey's kicking in. <laughs> Whenever you flip your wrist, does that trigger the scissors? Like you're still looking, aren't you? <laughs> yes. I'm right, aren't I? It's around the millions. Dude, yeah. Four millions? <laughs> It says, million? okay, it says it took the city 12 years to move all the bones from uh, all the bones from the bodies, numbering between six and seven million. Yeah. What the fuck? So um, if I remember correctly, uh, a lot of those bodies were contributed to the plague that yeah. happened. And so like uh, that's where they they, they ran. So uh, they started doing that because all of their uh Graveyards were, were being full. They were being overrun and they didn't know what to do with all these dead bodies. So that's why they started just sticking them underneath into the catacombs. And that's how. And, and then and then when they were sending all the dead bodies down there, it's uh, people started getting creative and started stacking the bones in decorative fashion. Where they're grabbing femurs and building these beautiful looking architectural stuff with real human bones. That so, is art. That's art. <laughs> That's yeah. fucking dark and it's pretty cool. It's dark and, and at cool. At the same time. It's, it's history, bro. It's history. It's fucking weird. French people were weird back then. Oh, uh-huh. All right. So something else I want to say about Edward Scissorhands as well. I know we're like, we're kind of going longer than we expect to, I, but I did just not so think much, we were going to talk about I know, but then much. like, I want to keep like talking about it. Uh, the whiskey's kicking in. The whiskey's <laughs> kicking in. Yeah. So uh, one of the people to audition for Edward Scissorhands, and let's, let's try to imagine what this would look like. Jim Carrey auditioned for Edward Scissorhands. Okay, I can see him playing the weird, creepy vibe that Edward does because you know how he has that stiff face. He's, he's also and walks tall. He's really also weird. taller than Johnny Depp too, so you'd have more of like a lanky, slender man. That, yeah, like yeah, that lankiness, like that. the slender man lankiness. So yeah, that that's been true. Interesting. That would have been interesting, but I don't think it would have. Uh, back in, like I said, back in the days, it, like it was so hard for me to see comedians in a more, seri- a more serious role. So I, I don't think we would have gotten that pure emotion and like that purity feel that Johnny Depp was able to portray. Yeah, that's a good one. And now this one blows my mind. So apparently uh, Gary Oldman, who is the best actor oh, alive right now in our time, don't even at me. He's my favorite actor right now. <laughs> yeah, really? Love me some Gary Oldman. Yeah, yeah. He read the script and he turned it down. And now he's like, I kind of regret it. Really? So I would love to see. Yeah, Gary Oldman is like diverse as fuck. So I would love to see how he would have done his you know portrayal of Edward Scissorhands. It's hard for me to see him as Edward Scissorhands because I only rem- know Gary Oldman in his like more recent roles, like how he looks in the most recent roles. Like back in the day, I don't even remember how young he looked or how he looked around that age. Pretty much the same, like, just without the mustache. Yeah, just without the mustache. Without the Gordon mustache. <laughs> without the Gordon mustache. Yeah, I wouldn't. I, I couldn't see him as like visually. I I know you would kill it acting. Just, just not, just not visually. I, I don't know, see him. It's just one of those what ifs, you know. The what ifs if he was it, like, I don't know. Him in a, in a spandex suit would be so weird. Like, well, have you seen um the movie about um, Sid Vicious and Nancy called Sid and Nancy? No. Gary Oldman was Sid Vicious from you know the Sex Pistols, and he was like you know super skinny and like in the like tight leather shit and stuff. So he came out a little bit before that. But a good movie as well. Oh, nice. toxic as fuck. Toxic? But, like, like with a couple. Oh, okay. But yeah. Gary Oldman is a fucking master. Oh, no. He's always been. What's your favorite Gary Oldman? Uh, well, I was, oh, hoping, I was hoping you'd ask me. We I was hoping you'd ask me. Oh, you were hoping. Well, okay. I'm going to say Batman okay. Begins because it, it's more, it's a little more recent, I guess. But it's, mm. uh, it to me, with no, uh, no, nothing against, um, is it Jeffrey Rush? Jeffrey Wright? Who's playing Gordon now? Ah, shut up. Uh, he looks like he's going to be great. I, I can't wait to see him. He's yeah. going to be awesome. But I loved, um, uh, fucking Gary Oldman's performance. He he really brought the character to life. Yeah. Um, but also I loved I loved Bram Stoker's Dracula. Yeah, I was about to say was, that. I really liked him even as though, Dracula. Even though fucking Keanu Reeves and Winona Ryder and then they brought the movie down, Gary Oldman kept it going. He had that like that off like performance. Um, and then he just he's just amazing. Yeah, he was also in the Lost in Space movie in the '90s. He was the villain. Yes, he was. I loved him as the uh, uh, what was it, Doctor uh, Smith? I think so. Yeah, 
Something like that. I think so. There was a, there was one other movie I really liked him where he played this like oh, I'm trying I'm trying to find the name of it. I forgot what it was. Um, he plays this like kind of like drug headed criminal. Uh, oh shit! Book of Eli. He was dope in Book of Eli, bro. I haven't seen that one. You haven't seen Book of Eli, dude? Denzel yeah. Washington fucking kills it. Yeah. Um, okay, I'm Jeff- still trying to. I, I want to say it was the way of the gun, but okay. I don't think that was the one. Wait, he was in. He was in way of the gun. No, I, that I, was Benicio. No, it was another one though. I, I, I don't think it was that one then. It's Anyways, it one. was. It's, it's Jeffrey Wright. All right, there we go. Jeffrey Wright. Yeah, uh, yeah. So he looks awesome. I can't wait to see him as Gordon. I'm still looking. I'm, I'm still looking. Trying to remember what what, what role it was that I'm I saw. I'm other in. Gary Oldman movies that I love. There was another one too where he was a drug dealer in the uh, '90s, and it was with Sam Jackson. It was in our. Shit, there you go, Leon the Professional. There you go. Sorry, I had to scroll all the way back. Leon the Professional oh. is my favorite role that Gary Oldman was in. He played this like weird like criminal, and like he was like I don't know if he he was like playing doing drugs in that movie, but the way he really portrayed that addiction to it, mm-hmm. like it was so clean i loved him in that movie okay go to what was the topic you were talking about sorry i don't remember but uh, <laughs> now I, I just want to watch that movie it's uh, with the fucking the Nell- other Nellie portman right yes when she was like i think that was like her starring debut yeah she was so young she was she was a kid and then it had the the french guy uh from like godzilla and the other stuff uh i almost said matthew broder jean 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 don't say jean claude van damme no i was gonna say he's not french i was gonna say jean claude van damme it was <laughs> It was, I think his name is John something. He's 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 a French actor. He's super good. Well, speaking of like starring debut roles, this is one of two movies that Johnny Depp starred in. It came out the same year. It was this movie and a movie called Cry Baby. Have you seen Cry Baby? Oh, shit. That, it's been a long time since I've seen it, but yeah, I've seen it. I hate musicals, but Cry Baby is fucking awesome. I love it. And these two movies came out the same year, and we, we missed the anniversary for that movie because it was earlier this year. Cry but, Baby? Yeah. Uh, it, well, we've been doing a lot of this. Uh, we usually never drop these many drink till like decades in one month. Yeah. But there was a lot of good movies in December. And here, and here's some some fun irony or coincidence. I can never tell the difference. Johnny Depp's first movie. Do you know what it was? No. Uh, it, it wasn't. It wasn't. Um, uh, Nightmare on Elm was it? Yes, it was. It was. It was. And oh shit! Okay. What was what was Freddy's weapon? <sighs> the knife hands. And yeah. then he later became Edward Scissorhands. Shit. Yeah. Uh-huh. That's perfect. That was perfect. I wonder if, you see, I was going to wonder if like these kind of things are done in, on purpose. I mean, like nowadays, it does happen on purpose. Like studios and fans pushing for these kind of like fan castings really does kind of outweigh things and makes things happen. But back in the day, like I think they were just pure coincidence is yeah they had to because growing to something more because I, I think these were based off of like like you know drawings that tim Burton did and they're mm-hmm. like oh let's make this into a movie which is how a lot of his movies started which is mm. great because you can you can see a lot of story in his in his artwork yeah man it's awesome i've always wanted to go to tim Burton's uh, museums the, the art museums that they hold with tim Burton's art yeah i've always wanted to go uh the last time out the, the last one that they had here in la i wanted to go to but i can completely blanked out on it or mm. forgot or or I think that stuck with work. I don't know, but I completely missed it. And now that we're stuck in quarantine, <laughs> I was like, man. Forever. I re- they really need to bring that back. Those museums are amazing, though. Yeah, dude. I would love to go to them. And um, another thing I love about Edward Scissorhands, too, it's, it's revenge for the nerdy, awkward kid defeating the jocks. <laughs> that was like a reoccurring theme. Back in the day, like, back yeah, in the, I, I mean, I love yeah. Revenge of the Nerds, but Revenge yeah, Nerds. This, yeah. Is, this kind of thing. And a lot of people are like, oh, this is a, uh, this is Tim Burton's like, you know, like avatar. Cause he hated like, you know, jocks yeah. and shit like that. And he got the girl at the end. He got picked on when he was younger. Yeah. For, yeah and look at him now. Super for like, fucking rich. Yeah. And you know, having that fucking, uh, Robert Smith from the, was it Robert Smith from the cure? The, the dude is, it's Robert Smith, isn't it? That did what? From the Cure, yeah, with, with Robert the Smith, hair. yeah, with the yeah. hair and all that stuff, so, yeah. Which was an obvious inspiration for Edward's look. For Edward's look, yeah. I was wondering because when he puts uh, uh, the the way he dressed him up in the beginning when he first brought him home with the the slacks and the white button up and the things, I was like, yeah, that's that's the guy from the Cure. That that, that looks just like him. Yeah, and before Danny Elfman signed on to do the uh, the score, he actually asked Robert Smith to do the music but the he music. was he was like nah i never heard of tim burton i don't know who you are i'm kind of doing this thing called disintegration right now 
And then he's he's probably like, fuck. No, he didn't. He didn't need it. The Cure is super popular with emo kids. <laughs> he would have been richer. For sure he would have been. And uh, another what if. What if? What if man. we had the Cure inspire that soundtrack and and do all of it? But then we wouldn't have that that Danny Elfman score where she's fucking doing the snow dancing. <laughs> you still got that song stuck in your head? It's it's been in my head this entire time. You want you want to go down downside? We'll put it up. We'll put it on the the, the sound bar. I, I kind of do. We'll spin around. I kind of do. Yeah. All yeah. right. We'll, we'll, we can do that. We got ice in the refrigerator. We'll just crush it up and start throwing it up in the air. <laughs> A lot of people. Will, like I, I see this theory and I never thought about it, but like there would be like, oh, you know, is this really a fairy tale or did it really happen? Because, you know, she's telling like yeah. she, it starts off with another writer as an old lady doing her, you know, her uh, bad grandpa makeup mm-hmm. and you know, telling the story. And it's like, did that really exist? Do you think it was a fairy tale? Or do you think it, it really happened in no, that time? It must have really actually happened. Here's a funnier thing, too. With all that fake snow coming, it was all those like ice statues he was doing, right? Mm-hmm. How the fuck they get up there? Uh, so he just carried him. If you saw, there were slabs of ice. He's he's a machine. He can carry heavy shit. He carried him. Yeah, with his scissor hands. Yeah, it's just ice, man. <laughs> you can put it on your shoulder and carry it. You telling me Edward Scissorhands carry those heaps of ice? Yeah, he's a robot. He can carry them. Okay, we establish he's not a robot. He's a humanoid. Yeah, but he's strong. No, he's not he's strong as fuck. <laughs> All right, we need to start wrapping up, though. We've right, been right, at right. this too long. All, <laughs> right, all right, let's wrap this up here. All right, well, I think that's going to do it for this episode, guys. Thank you for listening, and we do apologize that we did not do a video podcast today, but you can still have us in the background. You can still welcome us into your rooms. You can find us on all podcast platforms. And once again, I am Detective Artemis. And I'm Journey. And this is Drink to a Decade. And remember, we drink and we watch things. Happy 30th anniversary, Edward Scissorhands. Cheers. Cheers, man. Until next time, friends.